Hello everyone and welcome to Realism Overall Sandbox where I decided to create the Chandrayaan 2 space probe. I made it in Blender of course and imported it in. And it doesn't have all the details uh, but it's looking spiffy enough for me to just uh, make a video out of it. Of course uh, today unfortunately the lander did not successfully land on the surface of the moon. At least we think it did not. Uh, communication was lost and that was the official word. Uh, the orbiter, though, is in orbit around the moon. Uh, the lander was supposed to uh, carry a rover. I've got the ramp here. And unfortunately, I have not made the rover. You'll have to make that on your own, mainly because I don't do wheels. <laughs> I, wheels wheels are a special thing, and I don't do wheels. But uh, we've got a ramp for it, so uh, you can make your own little rover. Otherwise, uh, we've got the engines, and I'll show you how to put it together. It's It's... There are things that I would like to add to it eventually, and I hope that they eventually do a Chandrayaan 3 and try it again. I, that They seemed rather close to succeeding, and it's probably just a software glitch or some minor issue that uh, can be resolved. I mean, it was basically in the final phase of flight, and boy have I been there. I've programmed a few lunar landings and had the same sort of thing happen so you know uh, I, I feel I feel for it anyway uh, but uh, yeah so I'll show you how to put it together of course I'll have the zip file in the video description uh, other than that the, this is the GSLV Mark 3 that I made a little bit fuzzy when you zoom in but otherwise looking okay when you zoom out the only thing here that isn't my part is this Ariane 5 uh, payload adapter and that I believe is from uh, real scale boosters yes it is real scale boosters uh, has that one so we'll see how this works out i haven't gotten it to the moon yet this is a first try uh, I and mean, it's not a first try for checking out the components it's just a first try for getting it to the moon and there are a few things that i need to improve one is the orbiter's solar panel for instance uh, needs to be able to pivot i haven't done that yet so i haven't got a pivot thing on there and again, there's a lot of scientific instruments that need to go on. I haven't put those on to get the antenna at least. So that's good. And we'll check out the RCS thrusters and all that business. But first, let's put it together. So the obvious thing to do is to type in Chandrayaan and, uh, with the H. There we go. And for some reason, this fly-by-wire avionic sub pops up. But uh, no, basically, we need the lander first. And then we can put on the outer engines. There are five engines. Originally, it was only supposed to have four. But uh, that was when it was landing on the surface of the moon directly instead of getting into orbit first. Oops, don't do that, okay? So it was originally supposed to have these four. Dimension-wise, it's close, but I didn't really have a blueprint. I just had a basic sense of where things were. So um, yeah, it might. but dimensions might be a little bit off. Um, I used wiki had the dimensions listed and it seems to fit those <laughs> so anyway uh, different images seem to suggest different things now I have trouble uh, getting this on the right node if I try and put it on now they decided to add the fifth engine to the center when they changed it so that it had to make orbit around the moon first instead of landing directly so anyway I put the orbiter on and then sneak in and it's a little bit of a trick. Uh, almost there. There we go. And then put that on there. Okay. So uh, the Chandrayaan 2 engine. Very small. 0.8 kilonewtons. 800 newtons. Actually upgraded from a 440 newton um, kicker engine. Uh, basically a kicker stage. And actually probably the one on the orbiter is the 440 newton kicker stage because I saw that the burn time seemed to be like more than three hours. You'll probably thank me for uh, giving you the 800 Newton one though instead, because as it is, the burn time is, oh, we need to lock this fuel. So remember to lock the fuel until you need to use it because there's no full decoupler there. There is a decoupler, hopefully, uh, assuming this works, um, on the orbiter, but yeah, uh, just lock that fuel to get Otherwise, so you can see the delta V, and that's sort of important. 2,670 on the lander, 
and it should be correct. I gave it the right dry mass and the right fuel mass. So I went with the mass on the fuel. The only thing that's a question mark is the ISP on the engines. I assume that they were running on MMH and N204. It's possible that they're running on UDMH and N204. That's actually probably a little bit more likely. But uh, ISP wise, there's not going to be a big difference between those two. Uh, the question is whether I've got the ISP on here right. It's about 310 seconds ISP right now. Could be less. But, well, for your purposes, I figure you'll want some margin. But as you can see, with only one engine down here, this has a 1 hour and 46 minute burn time. So, you probably don't want the 4 and 40 Newton version on there. And uh, we'll go with this for now. So, other than that, we need the ramp. And that goes on this node, of course. And the ramp... I decided to make the ramp part separate because this already had an animation for the landing gear. So, I only wanted one animation per part. And this is a tr sort of trivial animation looking at it, but... The ramp does have a collider, but I haven't tested that yet, so... Good luck with that. And other than that, after that we get the GSLV parts. Mm, that's already enough. And uh, you want the um, adapter from real scale boosters unless uh, you'll need some sort of decoupler between the bottom of this and the top of this tank. And then we have the fairings. And then we have the CE20 upper stage engine, which uses hydrog hydrogen and oxygen. Obviously staging has to be correct. And that's that's all wrong. That's just all wrong. And because there's no decoupler up there. And after that, the lower stage. Probably rotate it like this. And then at the bottom of the lower stage, we've got the core engines, two of them. And you'll need decouplers, but on the side you can put the two boosters. But I have it all, all built already, so I'm not going to obviously bother with that. Oh, put separatrons on the boosters, of course. And we'll just get the pre-built one. We are located in India for the launch. And we will attempt to launch to the moon. So, meet you outside. Okay, so here we go. I'll just manually launch it so that we can correct the inclination. Um, possibly I could have just done it by launching to a particular launch azimuth, but let me just go ahead and do it this way. So, uh, well, here we go. SRBs. Good times. Hmm. Heading. Well, we'll see. Let's try this away. Oh, nice clouds around here today. Okay, I don't have the exact timing here, but core ignition. And we'll wait until the thrust hits uh, low point. That's good. Booster set. Now, if you do have any further details about the Chandrayaan mission or anything else uh, about this that you think you have some data on that I didn't, feel free to share it. Like, I couldn't even uh, find exactly which fuel the mission used, though. On reflection, since this stage uses UDMH and N204, maybe it should be using UDMH instead of MMH there. The ISP of the engines on the orbiter and lander would be especially nice. I do not have that. I happen to know the fairing separation time. It's about 10 seconds. And fairing set. And off they go. Okay, separation and ignition. And we'll need some pitch. 
I think from the pictures, and it turns out that the solar panels are a little bit darker than this blue. It, they, they look more blackish, more like the Dragon 2 trunk than this sort of bluish solar panel. Fix that. It, it'll only look good if you have textures unlimited, by the way. That's what makes it look shiny. Otherwise, it's going to look pretty dull. I'm doing this in 1.3.1 because that's still my historical missions install. I don't believe there should be any particular difference in 1.6.1. Don't ask me about versions in the middle though. Well, it uh, appears I might have a little bit too much fuel here. And that's interesting. When I uh, launched this, I had previously tested this out with uh, KOS launch, it only ended up in orbit with 2,900 meters per second. Technically, to get to the altitude that uh, we needed to get to match the actual mission, I would need to get to 2,000. I need 2,500 delta V. Right now, I'm gonna end up in orbit with uh, with enough to actually transfer directly to the moon. Um, the mission weighs correct. I mean, based on all the information I have. It is the right mass. Um, maybe there's some other loss. Maybe the fairing, because uh, the rocket I I put together based on the best data on the rocket that I could get. Um, maybe that was a little bit wrong. I haven't got RCS on here. I guess that would diminish the delta V a little bit. The fairings might be a bit light. I'll have to think about that. One thing though, we do have to correct inclination, so that's that's gonna add to the requirements. Hmm. Maybe we'll do an off-plane transfer. That would be best. We could do a transfer here. We'll just take advantage of the situation and not cycle out for an hour. I mean, I don't mind. If you want to spend a few hours, or with physical time warp, maybe 40 minutes doing the cycling out procedure, my guest. This will do for me. Um, okay. Well, it depends if our fuel remains settled, though, of course. We only have one more ignition on this stage. I don't know how many ignitions the CE-20 is supposed to have. This seemed reasonable. Since it is a geosynchronous launch vehicle. And India does not lie as close to the equator as Kuru. Uh, the Ariane 5 just does one burn from Kuru, but it's only at a latitude of 5 degrees. Uh, Okay, well, that stage is out, but we have some sort of an approach there. Not really a sufficient approach, we'll have to do some sort of correction. But, alright, separation. And forward, okay, engine works. Let's get into daylight. Well, we're still not recharging, so these panels aren't really doing what they're supposed to do exactly. I, the sun, only sun tracker I have is actually pointed straight up, so I cheated. Keep that in mind. This panel, though... Alright, well, it's edge on right now, and it's not getting sunlight. That makes sense. Let's say... Sun... Down. Oh, and we need to actually manually activate the RCS here. Execute. RCS on. The RCS works. And now it's recharging, so that's that's as good as it's going to get for now. Okay, let me plot a correction. We really, really want to get to the South Pole. I don't really care about making orbit, to be honest, but I guess, I mean, it wouldn't be nice to leave the orbiter crashing into the moon, despite my impatience, of course. So if you, I gotta adjust the center of mass on this, 
doesn't seem like it's in the right place. Um, if you uh, figure out the math on it, uh, basically after it gets to doing its 2,500 meters per second with the upper stage of GSLV, um, it then needs to do about 700 more, six to 700 more with the orbiter to get a translunar injection. And then around the moon, it's gonna need to do 800 to eventually get into a low orbit after all those capture burns. So that's uh, 1,500 meters per second. That leaves us with about 200 meters per second to spare in the orbiter, which it would probably need just to stay in orbit around the moon given the moon's mass concentrations. So overall, I think this is a reasonable amount, 1,750 or so. Oh, only a 43 degree inclination. Hold on, that's not acceptable. How is this only a 43? I don't even understand. Okay. That is 71 degrees. That would get us to the prime landing site, presumably, hopefully. I'm not going to try and land at the prime landing site, mind you, but just in principle. Well, we conserved fuel by not using much thanks to the upper stage of the GSLV Mark III. I guess we can put up with some inaccuracies thanks to that. I wish I had done this earlier, uh, made this a little bit earlier, and possibly had more time to introduce fixes for people to play around with, but in a way this, I feel, also sends an important message. Why does it seem like the texture on the moon is doubled? I don't know what's going on there. But yeah, I think it was a solid I mean, getting the orbit around was an achievement, and it was a solid try, and I think the system basically works. So I look forward to the next one. Okay, we're finally getting the orbit down to the target level, and I don't want it to deviate. It's been a long burn. Okay, that's good enough for me. Alright, well, uh, downside is if we really want to... Well, where the heck is our minimum? Well, it's around the Terminator, it looks like. Let me see. Um, pick target on map. Let's say... Well, that's... That's pretty far south. I mean, we could land there. And let us decouple the lander. Orbiters in orbit and everything. I haven't checked comms. I don't use comms in this install, so that's going to be a separate thing. And I definitely have not configured it for remote tech, just a heads up. Okay, so we have to unlock the fuels. Okay, those thrusters are working. Orbit retrograde. Uh, G will not deploy the gear, unfortunately, because I cheated. You could uh, parent that action group in the VAB, of course. Okay, so that's okay. And probably around here I'll begin the descent burn. Uh, these are basically overgrown RCS thrusters, the main engines, so I'm assuming functionally infinite ignitions. No throttling though, so you're gonna have to um, sort of puff them in order to land. Use the multiple ignitions. Ooh, that's quite loud. Very vigorous. Okay, how does that look? That looks okay. Pretty rough around here. Oh, there's Earth right there. Sort of peeking above the horizon. Um, gotta make a little executive decision here. I really don't like this area. <laughs> so, um, let's see if we can get beyond that. I don't know if it's very clear here whether we do or not. 
I could spend a little bit of fuel hovering, it looks like. Mm, so I'm going to turn that off and just do some manual Neil Armstrong sort of deal. Now, mind you, the Delta V right now is without a rover. So it's not carrying its most important payload. Not to mention, well, I mean, the scientific instruments we built in. That mass is already accounted for. Well, none of the landscape looks particularly inviting, to be honest. I guess as long as we get to 70 degrees south, I'll be satisfied. I think the right around, right around here-ish looks good, doesn't it? I don't imagine that this is how they programmed the lander to execute the burn. Okay. Now we wait for the suicide burn, basically. 17 seconds. Oh, please be in time. That suicide burn countdown is negative right now. <laughs> okay. Well, this one arrived. Not a whole lot of extra delta V for the rover. Now let's turn off the RCS thrusters. Make sure the ramp is okay. It looks okay. I haven't tested the collider. There's a lot to test about this still for those who want to use it. But anyway, it is what it is. And the link will be in the video description. So with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.